Thank you for joining us here today. I'm Commissioner of Agriculture Steve Troxler, and today I would like to read you a book that is Farm to School, Crops of North Carolina, a visit to the apple orchard, and I think you can see that we're going to have a good time reading this book about apples. I'm going to be joined today on occasion by Farmer B, and uh, he wanted to welcome you to the farm and a special thanks goes out to Heather Barnes and Karen uh, Baltimore uh, for the, the content of this book and the illustrations. Farmer B wants to thank all of the people that contributed to this book, and there are quite a lot of people that did, and I thank them too. So I'm going to start, and I'm going to ask you, have you ever wondered where the apples served at your school come from? They come from farms like this one. Did you know apples are grown on farms called orchards? North Carolina is among the top 10 apple producing states in the United States. Farmers harvest North Carolina apples from August through November, but they work in orchards all year long. Come with us, we'll show you. Apples are pr primarily grown in Western North Carolina but can be grown across the state. Farmers choose what kind of apples to grow from over 7,500 different varieties. Some varieties have red skin, while others have green, pink, or yellow skins. Apples can taste sweet, sour, or tart. Apples grow on trees. Each tree has roots, a trunk, branches, and leaves. Trees flower in the spring and have fruit in the fall. Parts of an apple include a stem, a skin, flesh, core, and seeds. And Farmer B wants to jump in here and tell you that the apple's core has five to ten seeds in five different chambers, and you can see in your book how the apple is actually structured and the seeds with inside the core. Apple trees are planted in orchards. Standard orchards have rows of trees that can reach 20 feet tall. These trees reach full production when they are 12 to 15 years old and continue producing food, fruit for 30 to 40 years. Wow, that's a long time. Dwarf apple trees, which do not grow over 12 feet tall, are planted in many of the new orchards. Branches are trained to grow along wires on a trellis system. This allows more air and sun to reach the fruit. Shorter trees also make it easier for workers to prune and harvest. Trees start producing a good crop of apples when they are three years old. And Farmer B wants to say, did you know apples are a part of the rose family of plants? I bet you never thought of that. Farmers may also use a tree planter to plant trees. This machine digs holes in the ground and a worker plants a tree in each hole. Winter is a busy time in the orchard. Trees are dormant or not actively growing, so it's the perfect time to plant new trees. Farmers use an auger powered by a tractor to dig the hole. Each tree is planted by hand. Trees are pruned every year to remove old or damaged branches. This improves the quality of the fruit because sunshine and air can reach the leaves and the fruit. Many farmers rent honeybee hives. Beekeepers move hives into the field before apple trees start blooming in March. Honeybees carry pollen from one flower to another as they drink nectar from each one. This is called pollination. Without pollination, apple trees would not produce fruit. An apple will grow from each pollinated flower. If a tree has too many flowers, the fruit will be small and poor quality. While flowers are blooming, farmers can thin or remove some of the flowers. This results in larger, healthier fruit on the tree. Flowers can be killed by freezing temperatures or frost. In the past, farmers used helicopters to protect crops from frost. 
there was usually a layer of warm air above the trees. Wind from helicopter blades pushed warm air down around the flowers to protect them from cold. And Farmer B wanted you to know, did you know that pilots use their arms and their legs to fly a helicopter? Today, many farmers have large fruit fans in the orchards to protect flowers. The fa fans mix upper warm air with cold air below, raising the temperature enough around the trees to prevent damage. Other farmers use sprinkler systems to spray water over the trees. Water freezes around the flowers, protecting them from damage. Some apple varieties are ready to go to harvest sooner than others. Farmers start picking early varieties like ginger gold in mid-August. Harvest continues through November when later maturing varieties like pink lady are ripe. How do they know when apples are ready to pick? I want you to know that Pink Lady is my favorite variety of apples. I absolutely love them when they come in in late November. And Farmer B warns you to know that Red Delicious is the most widely grown variety in the U.S. As fruit matures, the amount of sugar increases. Farmers can use a tool called a refractometer to measure sugar in the juice. They also look at the skin. All apples begin with a green skin, but cool evening temperatures in late summer cause some apples to change color. For example, red delicious apples will have red skin when it's ripe. Granny Smith apples will stay green and they're still ripe. Apples are picked by hand. Growers wait until most of the fruit on a tree is ripe for harvest. Workers use ladders to reach the top of tall trees in standard orchards. And Farmer B wants you to know that many farmers donate apples left in the field to food banks. Apples are placed in cloth picking bags worn by workers, which are emptied into large wooden or plastic bins. Workers can harvest 20 bushels from one mature apple tree in a year and one bushel equals 40 pounds. Boy, that's a lot of apples. Bins are taken to the packing house. Some apples are packed right away. Other apples are stored for six to seven months in refrigerated rooms. Apples can be kept in special rooms for up to one year. By doing this, you're never without an apple. You can eat an apple all year long. Apples bruise easily. So the first step in the packing line is to lower the bin in a tank of water. Apples are 25% air, so they will just float out on the top of the water. On the line, apples are checked for quality, color, and size. Whole apples are then packed into bags or boxes. Sliced apples are packed in snack bags. Many of North Carolina's apples are used to make apple sauce, apple slices, cider, juice, vinegar, baby food, or other food products. A fun fact that Farmer B wants you to know, it takes about 36 apples to make one gallon of apple cider. Farmers also sell fresh whole apples at roadside markets and pick your own orchards or to grocery stores. I wonder where your family buys apples. Some apples were sold to schools in North Carolina through the North Carolina Farm to School Program. A truck from the North Carolina Department of Agriculture and Consumer Services delivers them to schools like yours. We have 37 tractor trailers in the Department of Agriculture that deliver these apples to your school. Schools serve North Carolina apples and bagged apple slices. Your lunch may also include a chef salad with pita points, corn, and milk like the one pictured here. Have you eaten apples at your school? Apple chips with yogurt dip is a healthy snack that is easy to make. But don't forget to ask an adult for help. And you can see there is a recipe in your book to just do this. 
North Carolina and apples are tasty and good for you. One medium apple has 70 to 90 calories. Apples are cholesterol free, low in fat, and a good source of vitamin C and fiber. They are delicious eaten fresh or cooked. And Farmer Beef says you can also dip fresh apple slices. North Carolina apples are a delicious snack you can eat anywhere. What is your favorite variety? I told you that I like Pink Ladies, but I know each variety is different so you can form your opinion about the best North Carolina apple.